All right, it is a Monday morning, and it's an exciting Monday around here because Natalie, our worship director, organized Christmas decorating mm. by the staff. She's going to have some little breakfast treats for us as soon mm. as we finish here. Mm. Uh, I remember That's that why part. you're in a hurry. Yes, so. and it's like, come on, let's yeah. go. I've been pushing these guys this morning. Let's I already go. have the Rock and Joe coffee. Uh, it's already brewed, and so I there it is. I saved a glass from yesterday. I took a mug at the end of worship yeah. home so I could warm it this morning. Again, nice. thanks uh, to Rock and Joe for yeah. they're starting to donate our coffee on Sunday mornings. That's- this, this podcast. is brought to you by this podcast. Oh. <laughs> and, and I was so excited when I got there because they brought the only one flavor, but it's my favorite flavor of all coffees, Velvet Underground. Mm. And so, it sounds so. like there is a holiday blend that they're going to feature as well. In store and on Sundays here, so we are, we do sound like a commercial. I'm just, 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 you know, I'm just, just a coffee I'm, guy. So. This is my favorite flavor. This I have my. no interest right. whatsoever. <laughs> the stock option. I just that actually we like my in-laws. I feel good about yeah, that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna move on from that yeah. to <laughs> our sermon extra. Pastor yeah. Dustin, you wrapped up the Ruth sermon series yeah. on Sunday. So Ruth, chapter four, Act four. And uh, I guess genealogies matter, right? Mm, that was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah hey, I was proud of you work. going through those names, man. You just you, you were like you're like I'm gonna go through this. Right, we're gonna do nice. it. That no, nice. I shared though. It is like I know I've always kind of been that way. I think most people are. You get to those genealogies, especially in the Old Testament, and you're like, oh, this is rough. Like I don't know yeah. most of these people or how to pronounce the name. Let's just skip past it. But. Then you get to these places like at the end of Ruth, and like it does matter. Like yeah. this is here for a reason. And when you start to connect the dots, you're like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, you know, think about this. And, and this is one of those kind of, I don't know, surreal types of things to think about. How many stories among God's people throughout the ages happened and weren't recorded? Hmm. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So, so Ruth was written down for a reason. Yep. And and I think just as you said yesterday, you get to the end and you're like, oh, this is, I mean, it's a great story regardless, yeah. even if you didn't have the genealogy, it's a great story. It's full of all the things that we love and good stories, but this one points to Christ and it's like, let me connect the dots for you yep. one to one to one to one. And, and, so, and those connected dots, uh, it just, it just hit me looking at the Rahab the prostitute, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and and she's the great grandma of David the king. Yeah, and you you look at the humble people in life, and or mm-hmm. if you feel like one of those humble people in life that really doesn't doesn't have much to offer God or the kingdom, yeah. and understand that it could be setting up for a few generations down the road where God is going to have a or, massive impact. Yeah. Or if you have it, isn't even if you just feel like I don't matter but if you have a checkered past you know if you've, you've checkered, got a, past. That checkered, is that. Past. <laughs> checkered past or, or or maybe going back to the marvel movies you know it's like my ledger is full of red um you <laughs> yes. know so i mean but but seriously if you mm-hmm. you know for those people who feel like um i've i've done too much i've i've yeah. cost too much to other people there's no way god can use me i mean she's a prostitute right in jericho which we were in jericho that was mm-hmm. that was really cool, um, but yeah, I just God God takes broken things and makes them brand new. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I, we talked about this for my school, my seminary classes right now, where we did a deep dive in the Old Testament, and this is amazing because this shows that you said it so well. The whole story is a redemption story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that because you know we sometimes go there's the Old Testament God and then there's the New Testament God. It's like no, this is the God that brought us Jesus at work way before that. Yeah. And and the amazing thing is, is now we have not one in Ruth, but two non-Jew converts essentially. And, and with different pasts and one was a Moabite and one was a prostitute. And so that's another nod to God is for all nations. Mm-hmm. His salvation is for all people that come to have faith in him. And that's where it's just like screamed off the page when you were going through that genealogy. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> And that is so much just at the heart of the story is the the redeeming. 
And that is the point that I wanted to hopefully bring home is that that's all of scripture. That That's the heart of it. It's, it's about redeeming. And I just, going through the Old Testament more and more, it's just, I keep seeing Jesus all over the place, or at least nods to, like pointing to mm -hmm. of, of the fulfillment that he has. And then you think about his words that I didn't come to do away with this. I came to fulfill all mm -hmm. of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, it, it makes you wonder how, you know, and I get people at that time were looking for someone other than what they thought Jesus was going to be more the earthly king. Um, but when you look at even what's going on in Israel today too, it's like, how, how do you live in that part of the world and you're around that much history connecting back to not just the time of Jesus, but even back further to, to Ruth and Boaz and all of this and, and not see like the fulfillment mm -hmm. in all of these things. And no, that's so true. That's so true. Well, and along those lines, and you talked about this, uh, maybe your, your previous sermon, but a little bit this one, or you brought it up about, you know, um, the time of judges. And I think a lot of people, which some of the judges were a type of Christ, you know, they, they came to, to kind of bring the people back to God. And Gideon's a good example. Gideon's that, a great yeah. example of, yeah. you know, <clears throat> uh, there's a political piece to it, but there was a very much battle piece to it, right? They were a soldier to deliver people from their enemies. And so I think that's what people were thinking of. But as we see over and over in the book of Judges, they God kept sending them and they kept turning away again. Yeah. It couldn't be yeah. what they were expecting. That didn't work. That type of that. So, type so here, here's just. A, I'm going to bridge something here that we were talking <laughs> off air before starting this, and uh, I want to connect to what we were talking about. In the book of Judges, you have the people of Israel um, just disobedience, unfaithfulness. Uh, they, they. It starts when they don't <laughs> fulfill what God had said. When Joshua led them across the Jordan into Canaan. They were supposed to wipe out all the Canaanites, take, you know, get everybody out. They didn't. They ended up keeping a remnant. They ended up getting curious. I would say probably falling in love with some of the cultural aspects, religious aspects. So they start intermingling this, these, these pagan religions and, and becoming, you know, a, a disobedient toward God. And so he would let another nation come in and, you know, take them over, oppress them and stuff like that. And then they'd cry out and he'd raise up a judge anyway. And so you think about the unfaithfulness of, of, uh, of the people of Israel chasing after other things. Well, Black Friday. <laughs> there it is. Like there the is. There it is. Oh, okay. Cyber Monday. No, but, Cyber Monday today. Yeah, Cyber yeah, Monday. Yeah. Another commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, but, but think about it. I, I think Andy, you said, um, the statistic was more people, there was more, more online money, money spent in like the two or three days mm -hmm. than ever before. Biggest Black ever Friday before. ever. Yeah. Biggest yeah. Black Friday ever. Yeah. So Black Friday is no longer standing in line out at mm -hmm. Best yeah. Buy uh, yeah. at three in the morning. It's, it's online. It, you mm -hmm. know, people have gotten come up to speed and said, you know, we're going to offer those platforms. And so today is Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think about, and those are all wonderful. I, I love a good deal. I, I bought mm -hmm. something online as well. Um, you know, and I, I love a good deal. Everybody does. But, I just see people chasing mm -hmm. so many things, thinking that those are going to, that's where the answer's at. That's going to be the, that's going to bring fulfillment. This is going to be the thing that finally satisfies. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm being overly generalistic in, yeah. in some respects, but, um, but the point is as a culture, how much do you think over the weekend people yeah. gave to yeah. God's ministry mm -hmm. versus how much they spent on Black Friday and Cyber Monday? Mm -hmm. I would say it is so minuscule that it probably doesn't even create a blip on the radar screen. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not suggesting people don't go out and spend on things that they want, need, like. All our gifts. people are responsible, I'm sure of that. The what? <laughs> All of our people are responsible. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that. I'm talking about yeah. other people. Other people, yeah, yeah. No, not, not Messiah people, yeah, of course. I didn't, I didn't oh. buy anything. <laughs> of course. I'm broke, so yeah. <laughs> that helped. That helped a ton. Yeah, that helped. <laughs> If I, yes, but I can buy it on credit. That's yeah, right. Later. I can Thought it about it. Credit, <laughs> credit. So, but no, I just, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm not the Grinch, yeah. you know, that says you're not supposed to go out and do it. But the point is, even if it was just somewhat, if we followed the 1090 rule. Yeah. I mean, think about it. For all the money we would spend on gifts, if 10% mm -hmm. of that we said we're going to gift to God, that would make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. You know, we say it every Sunday. It helps us be the church, helps us carry out the mission. And, and again, it's not a ploy to say, well, you need to give all your money to the church. It's just God doesn't say give all your money to the yeah. church. And, and I think so, just so on the heels of that, what is our next sermon series? 
God oh. gay. Ah, yes, it is. I'm God like, that is a good segue. Yeah, thank you. It's my job. Love it. Love work it. the segues in there. Well, and that's and that's what I was going to say. It gets exactly to your point about the Old Testament. Is you know the culture that they left that remnant was at work on them. You know, and it, it's tempting. It captures you. And, and our culture is the same way. And I think if you were on your phone any at all the last few days, how many ads were just text? Oh, yeah. Social media, yeah. just smoking oh, your phone. It's like, it was impossible. I yeah. mean, I almost feel like I didn't want to touch the screen because I'd end up buying something because they make it like one click now. You know, it's like, <laughs> what? Yeah, oh, my thank you for your yeah, purchase. All yeah. kinds so, of testing offers. What did I buy? So it's, 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 it's exactly the yeah. same. And that's why I love that we're doing God Gave because it is a return to, to the foot of the cross and, and realizing that he is the giver. Um, that gives us all. It gives us the opportunity yeah. to be good stewards or not. He he put supplies it all, and uh, and obviously made the biggest gift of all, which is the the verse that we're using. Yeah. And then again for the connection. So back to Ruth mm. is it's the same place. I mean mm. Bethlehem, this this yeah. tiny little town. So you, you look at sometimes the the people that seem so insignificant that God chooses to work through. Uh, the ordinary, but then God does these extraordinary things through them. But he does that with the places too. Like really Bethlehem and yeah, tiny yeah. little town of Bethlehem. Uh, that's where Jesus is, is born. And so again, just all of those connecting dots yeah. that we see through all of that too. And um, I wasn't expecting to connect it and bring it in, but when I heard, so this is kind of your, your dad moment. John, oh. um, mm, mm. but that, that Emily was going to be here and she was going to be singing the song that, oh. that she wrote recently too. And as I listened to it and the words, which is based on Psalm 56, one of David's Psalms, but to know like, wow, that these words were obviously true for his life, but you could just see the connection back yeah. to, to Ruth and Boaz and to Naomi, to their story too. And to think, yeah, he probably did draw on some of his oh, memories history. and the stories that were passed down from generations. And obviously this would have been one of those stories passed down too. So. Well, I, I appreciate you bringing that in. I didn't know you were going to do that. That was not a plant. Um, I, I didn't uh, pass him a 50 or anything and say, Hey, bring this up. <laughs> sure. It was a very right. proud moment, but the, what I wanted to say honest, and I'm going to come back to this, what I wanted to say, get up and, and right at the beginning of worship and say, Oh, by the way, I felt my grandson move yeah. for the yeah. first time. Oh. I was, Oh, that was such an amazing moment. I just I can't even explain uh, you grandparents out there know exactly what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. You get to see that little, that, oh, anyway, but, um, no, I appreciated that you brought that in and I appreciate that she was able to be here and, and the connection between what David went through, the, the whole oral tradition being passed down was like reading books. I mean, they didn't have books, um, you know, that was, uh, the written down things were, were rare except for in church, the scrolls and things like that at synagogue, but passing down of the stories. And of course, Ruth was written down. So, I mean, they would have been able to to pass it along. But no, good, great stuff. Um, I, my son-in-law, uh, Emily's mm. husband, uh, is in his fourth year of seminary. And we were talking out over lunch. He's like, man, that was such a great wrap-up of Ruth. He said mm. that just connected so many dots together. Totally. And mm-hmm. he just absolutely loved it. So there was a shout-out from from uh, John Bartels as he's studying. Mm. And since he's at seminary, he's obviously smarter than we are. It's nice to know that, yeah. (laughs) Those that are fresh in or out of seminary, that they're still get their approvals like, okay, Maybe we're still yeah. doing okay. Yeah. Well, Andy's in <laughs> seminary too, yeah, so he's still so you know we 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 have a resident scholar, and, and he's been talking about how how yeah. hard he's been working. So yeah. he's, he's learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. It's a blessing. Yeah. Well, one last thing as we get ready to get into God gave um, one of the one of the challenges with Ruth. I love the story. Loved how it was wrapped up. Everything, but one of the one of the things about it is it's a time of scarcity. Mm. It's a famine. Ruth and well Naomi first, but Ruth and Naomi both together. They're in need, they're desperate, they can't take care of themselves, they go back to Bethlehem and the whole story unfolds. One of our issues in the United States is we're not in a famine. Right. We're in a famine spiritually, mm-hmm. but we're not in a famine mm. physically You know, for supplies, food, things like that. And so there isn't always that, you know, it's the old adage, you know, you can lead a horse to water, can't make him drink. Well, if the if the horse isn't thirsty or doesn't think they're thirsty, you know why would they? You know, and so it's just a anyway. So that that was the one thing in Ruth that it's like there is scarcity today. It's it's a it's a spiritual scarcity. Uh, there is a famine of of faithfulness to God, but there's a lot of people who are asleep. 
and and they need to be if we could use it in a positive way they need to be woken up to what they're missing and I, I just anyway so I, I just there was that one thing about Ruth that yeah. it's like man there's just well and that's where again you just let all of the the scriptures kind of unfold and so whether it's going through the Torah or you're in the time of the judges and Joshua and then Ruth it just keeps repeating itself yeah. like. God brings the people back mm -hmm. and things are good mm -hmm. for a while. And then they give in to yeah. the day and the culture and they start to drift away. And right. then God's got to bring them back and to the point of where he just lets them go to exile. But it's for that purpose again of like, I'm mm -hmm. going to redeem you. I'm going to restore you. Um, but history, sin, it all keeps repeating itself. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. And it, I think the last thing I would say to piggyback off that, and I'm excited for God gave and, and we're, how yeah. we're going to start the new year too. I've been reflecting a lot about just generosity and stewardship and all those things in my own personal life and my family's life. And then how we can do that as a Messiah family is still working as a development director. And I just thought about it the other day and there was definitely a time, a season in my life where I was, God was speaking to me about being generous and, and maybe even just not giving scraps, but giving more than that and, and stretching it. And I've told you my story and I'll probably share it again, but I, I, I did get to a moment now. I, I hit me on Sunday and, uh, I thought about, and especially with this weekend going on, the money I've wasted, mm -hmm. how much spending I've done mm -hmm. on stuff that it's like, Oh, it would seem like a great thing at the time. And I don't yeah. use it. It's in a closet. Yeah. It's in my garage. In fact, it probably just frustrates me. Yeah. But I thought about now where I'm at and, and I still am prayerfully trying to get where I want to be, but giving to the church, that's never wasted. And I obviously get to be on staff here and see that, but I look at all the money that comes out of my wallet and it's just amazing how God has shown me that money I'm going to use. Yeah. This money, I might, <laughs> but really it might just sit in your garage. It, it's but, about value. Yeah, I, it, just yeah. it just hit me. It just hit me and and- Great point. I just, and, and I think I, when I was doing liturgy that last week, I said, just pray with God, talk to God about giving, not, not, I'm not, I'm not selling you on it, but prayerfully consider giving to the church and how you can do that as a family. And to me, that's been less waste and more glory. And and I didn't look at that way at the time. It seemed like a pain. It seemed like, yeah. oh, okay, fine, God, you got it. But now it's like, I don't well, know. I think what it requires is you have to. Um, you have to acknowledge that we often put other things on the throne. Yeah, exactly. And uh, of our hearts and, and it, you, you've got to wrestle with that because it will be painful mm -hmm. if you feel like, well, now I can't take that trip or now I can't mm -hmm. buy that thing. And it's like, well, maybe that's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's okay. But we're going to get into God gave yeah. uh, the anchor verse is John three sixteen. Uh, it's going to take us all the way up through Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, a beautiful way of just looking at how God is so generous, so loving and meets us right where we need to be met um, and, and filling us with his grace. Um, before we finish, I'll just, uh, I think, uh, just I want a little bit, give me a little bit more on that. Um, <clears throat> how long is that sermon series? I think that God gave is, is it seven weeks? Well, it'll take us through Christmas or, or is it just through Christmas? Yeah, through it, Christmas. There's so, multiple okay. services yeah. because we're, <clears throat> yeah. we're because we of Advent. Advent right. and, okay. Yeah, right. That's what yeah. I was, yeah. 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 I remember seeing our outline. So that, that would be have. seven, seven worship opportunities, four Sundays and, uh, and then the three. But Advent. just in December. Yeah. Very good. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. And then we're going to get into a great sermon series as Andy alluded to in the beginning of the year, just really looking at what matters. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Matters of the heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it all, it all connects. It together. all connects together. All it, connects it'll be, together. it'll be a great time. But um, speaking of God giving, just a quick shout out. The, just very thankful for the voters uh, week that we had. Uh, our, our family just comes together out of every all the votes cast for our ministry plan, our budget, ninety eight point six percent approval, um, hundred percent approval on the foundation board ratification, nice. and then we'll uh, Jonathan Burnham, the incumbent uh, LLB member, was was voted back in, but then we added Rich Aldag, uh, Susan Volker, and Lisa Davis uh, will be, those three will be added to our lay leadership board, and we're thankful for anybody who allows their name to stand. Mm -hmm. That's always a risk. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's, it's not a popularity contest, but there's a risk there. And so we're thankful for those who were, were willing to let their name stand. Strong, strong list across the board. Oh, yeah, absolutely yeah. strong list. And, uh, um, and so anyway, uh, just, just again, thankful for our Messiah family, thankful for uh, a great governing board. And just, you know, I said to people 
don't just vote on paper. We got to vote with our lives, you know, every day. This is something we got to yeah. do and yeah. uh, it's it's important. So we'll get an email out probably by the time anybody hears this, the email will have already come out. So it, it's, <laughs> it's old news. Probably will. Old probably news. will. Future you, here it yeah. comes. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Any other tips for future? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. right, 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 right. So. Um, no, it's great to get together again this morning. We are yeah. going to go have an exciting morning of decorating. decorating. Get the the sanctuary, the yeah. Great Hall, and uh, and we look forward to seeing uh, many of you in worship. Amen. Amen.